Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us here at, again as we talk with director Frederikana and his longtime friend and creative partner, Marius Lunda, about the making of the unique hybrid doc codename Nagasaki. This is Frederick's first documentary film, having made a name for himself through his love of genre and horror films. He and Marius have a long and literally storied history of collaboration. Frederick's work has screened at over a hundred film festivals. Now, I understand you two have been working together for a long time. How did you meet? Uh, yeah, how did we meet, Marius? <laughs> I can't even remember, but uh, uh, I think we met like through other friends um, and uh, we like quickly like bonded over uh, our love for films and especially uh, I guess of Japanese films and genre films. Mm. And um, I think we started, you know, making uh, like films together in like 2007, 2008 or something. And um, he started out, I mean, Marius was, was just like, uh, he was just there at the, at the right point because um, I wanted to maybe practice to, to uh, shoot some dialogue scenes. I was like, ah, oh, maybe Marius can, can do it. Uh, and that's just how it, how it began. And we just uh, worked together uh, on different projects, short films, music videos, and all of them kind of like leaning towards more like horror, science fiction, and yeah, more of the over the top kind of genre stuff. Yeah. And, um, and he's been involved in, in the most of these projects as, as an actor, script writer, like special effects maker, props, you name it, like everything. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, this is uh, yeah our first kind of foray into into documentary world. Yeah, and I have to say, Mar Marius, and everything that you acted in that I've seen here, you're fabulous in every single role. It's so great, and even as yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Now, how did how did this project come about? Were you guys just chatting one day and and started talking about? um your life Marius? oh well we've been i don't know it's come up you know throughout our friendship and uh it's been something we've been talking about like um but never that serious about making a project out of it right kind of like jokingly or uh, i don't know just yeah but, but never really that seriously um until just one day we just decided to to make it real yeah i don't mm -hmm. i can't really remember that is well <laughs> the uh deciding factor or, or what it was that made us do it right then but but it's been something we've been talking about for years yeah. so when did you actually talk about doing it and start doing the project how long has it been it is uh, four and a half years ago, I think, uh, maybe yeah. five. Yeah, maybe it's it, maybe it's like five years ago that we actually uh, like decided to like give it a go and just you know we just started with like writing a, like a one page treatment just to um, get a feel of how, how it's going to be to like creatively kind of uh, uh, talk about this um, and uh, I think very quickly we. We kind of felt like okay we need to we want to give this a go so that's yeah probably five years ago wow mm. that's great mm. well, and that the humor you spoke of you know when you were talking about the project in, with more humor i that i did love actually how that humor came across during you know the first uh, scenes of of the project mm. and when you're revealing the code name nagasaki docket it, that sort of film noir was just perfect to get us into this this frame of mind get get us into the same frame of mind as you guys were thinking mm, that's, that's great but that was the kind of thing that uh i mean that was probably the biggest challenge of like inviting people into this kind of uh experiment you know uh, mm. and um uh, and not just having people like out in the cold just wondering what, what the hell are we even doing but uh yeah mm. that's good to hear yeah, it was also, and I was always hoping that I could draw people more into my story and that I wouldn't be viewed as a, I don't know, just a, 
some subjects going through through something, but make the story something that will, you know, make my journey uh, more universally, um, or, that, or that people could connect with it, uh, and, and perhaps live through, live through my uh, whatever I was going through. That was sort of the hope, or the the my hope by by uh, sort of performing. Uh, all these aspects of my my journey and, and my whatever I was going through, you know, to draw people in and, and to hopefully make them connect in a different way than if they were just, you know, watching this guy, you know, going through his particular struggle or whatever. Exactly. And I mean, that's what I loved about it because you, you guys did draw us in slowly and the hybrid part of the doc like you just stick with it and it just gets, it It just pulled me right in to, to follow, to want to follow you. And I also loved, you know, the bits of symbolism that you used in different scenes, mm. like like the bottle floating on the water and the times when, mm. it, when it was on the surface and then it would sink and then it would pop mm. back up. <laughs> I just thought that was so great. And symbolizing the different moods too, because even though the bits of horror were were surprising, it I felt that it really did it really did give me a feeling for your feelings, Marish. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so did you did you two work on you know what what kind of genre you were you were going to give it a give a go with certain scenes and uh, yeah, I, I can begin, Mars. Uh, <clears throat> um, I think in, in the beginning, I think uh, we decided that we just wanted to open up with this uh, kind of like epic scene of Mars, like on the beach with the sword, um, without necessarily knowing exactly what it would in the end symbolize. Uh, so. Uh, but it was important to us to just like in the beginning, just like, let's just throw all the ingredients up in the air and, and see what sticks basically. Because mm -hmm. we were shooting and editing and writing simultaneously. So it was quite uh, the quest to figure out how to how to mix these kind of elements. And we, mm -hmm. we tried to stay quite true to the how the how the investigation and how the story progressed in real life, because we wanted to make sure the, these like fictitious scenes had like a connection with a what kind of um, what we were feeling at the moment. Either we were waiting for the embassy to call back or Marius doing his language work. We wanted to kind of feed off whatever mood, uh, whatever vibe that was in the, the actual situation in real life. And, uh, and all these ideas, kind of like came quite um, organically, right? just like talking about uh, the process that we were in. Um, and uh, of course, we, we did go back to like shoot some stuff, like we shoot some stuff, but that was more like for pure like aesthetic reasons, but we tried to, to stay true to, to that process as much as possible. Mm. Well, and I have to say that those moods came through like sitting there, and really feeling how nervous you were, Marius, when you mm. when you like sent that letter off to the consulate and mm. had to wait for for it to go through, could really mm. feel that feel that tension. But it it was true, you know, true documentary as far as far as I felt it. It was just so so real, so real. Mm. <clears throat> And did you really learn Japanese in six months, Marius? Well, you know, I didn't become fluent no. in Japanese in six months, but uh, I thought I I had enough uh, crammed into my brain to 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 make a real go of having a conversation and um, and uh, to communicate, you know, the things I I uh, I wanted to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, and, and I mean, as far as I know, Japanese is not an easy language to learn. So when you were speaking, it was fabulous. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. 
No, oh. I was really blown. I was blown away uh, by by uh, I, because I I've never heard him like the first time I heard him speak Japanese is in the film. So I I was I was, I was I, yeah I was really amazed at what he uh, what he pulled off. And what I what I was thinking you were talking about well not feeling like you had any Japanese culture in you mm -hmm. and you didn't remember anything but. I was wondering if maybe there actually was a fair bit lurking within you that you didn't even realize because, as I said, Japanese is not an easy language to, to learn and to speak so that no. you're understood. Well, you know, I was, uh, I was really, you know, going, going for it pretty hard those six months, uh, pretty desperately because, uh, uh, I already knew. I had already sort of decided that I would that I would try to 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 uh, um, that I would meet my mother that summer. Uh, so you know, it was just every day just studying and <laughs> studying pretty hard yeah, to, to yeah. make it happen. But uh, yeah, definitely got, a goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in the end, though, it turned out that I didn't need it, right? Yeah. That's like the, yeah, how the journey ended. It's yeah. Kind of but, at the same, but at the same time, in that dream sequence, which I think is the dream sequence, correct me if I'm wrong, where you wake up as a Japanese salaryman. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, all, all the studying that you've done, everything probably coalesced into into being able to you know capture more of what you wanted to in order to meet your mom mm. yeah well yeah that's that's one side of it another is uh, you know just growing up looking you know japanese i suppose yeah. um but not having any family members or or any japanese community around you um There's some part of me was always curious about, you know, what my life would have been had had I stayed with my mother and not my father and grown up in Japan and not Norway. So that's, you know, for me, the journey was also partly that just to, if I couldn't find my mother and if I couldn't reconnect with her, then maybe I could also get a sense of what my, or maybe I could at least get a sense of what my life would have been. Yeah. yeah. So that sense is there when I speak to her. I don't know if you catch that when we're having our conversation but there's a real sense of i don't know almost becoming um or, or feeling the presence of what our life could have been yeah yeah Sorry, I there. yeah a little bit up. yeah a little bit bittersweet but at the same time such joy yeah yeah in it in documentary film you know you never know what you're going to end up with in the end. And of course, in this case, you really didn't know what was going to come of it. But do you feel you ended up, especially thinking ahead that you wanted the happy ending and, and, and Frederick, your feelings <clears throat> for Marius succeeding and finding what he wanted were just palpable in the film. Did you, in the end, end up with um, the film you were hoping to have? No, I think it's uh, kind of strange uh, being like, in, like one part of me is is there like as his friend and just hoping that uh, everything goes well. And then you're also there as a filmmaker that you hope that you have a film that kind of works. <laughs> and like being in between those roles is a, I, I felt was really difficult. But um, but I'm really uh, I'm just so happy that it went well and uh that we like ended uh, like the the last year of, uh, of of making this film just had this really nice energy and just relief that we put into into the rest of the work so i'm, I'm extremely happy about how it turned out uh, both like creatively but also uh, for marius and, and reconnecting with his mother and you marius how do you feel oh well it's you know it's it's not just a film for me it's also like the document that shows how i reconnected with my mother and all these amazing things that happened in my life and 
And I think for Fred and the rest of the guys as well, a little bit, right? You know, Fred mm. also got to meet my mother and went on this adventure to Japan with me. So yeah. it was a big thing, a big journey, a big adventure for all of us. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. for your mom, too. Do, are you? Yeah, and for my mom, yeah. So uh, do you have a, a regular sort of communication with her now? Yeah, yeah. Fabulous. I do. Yeah. And uh, anticipate more, more trips back to Japan at some point? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. It was just so joyous, and I, I, the decision not to try to take cameras into the first meeting, mm. that that was outstanding, and the the animation just worked. It was just so lovely throughout. It was mm. the joy and the and the happiness really came through, along with the nervousness for sure. Mm -hmm initially so that was very cool and also what i loved was throughout the film it was all really gentle and quiet every now and then you get a bit of horror but even that was what was not was not it didn't take me out of the feeling it was mm -hmm. like i could um could uh feel it more in a way and understand more the, the feelings that people were having. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. That's very nice of you saying because uh, like editing this this film was a, a really difficult because uh, because uh, just as you said, you don't want to you don't want people to like snap out of a of a feeling. You just want to you want those kind of uh, like fictitious scenes or animation to kind of have like a deep rooted connection uh with the, with the film as a whole and just like i mean uh, i was quite kind of like nervous that uh, i was going to end up with something that would feel very like like episodic and with all these like separated elements and uh, like getting everything to, to feel just uh, as like one one piece of film was uh, was really important and i think that you know it may take people a couple of those transitions but overall mm -hmm. it was super and and I just I just can't tell you enough the the joy that I felt watching the animation and how Marius and your mother, how you came together it was just so delightful. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Was... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's just nice to hear. Just very nice. mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. And yeah. it, was, it was actually I felt it was the perfect kind of animation too, because that. It was a gentle animation that went along with mm -hmm. gentle feelings. Mm -hmm. it was soft. That's very, I, very I nice. Was also, also thinking about when uh, Marius, when you came back to where Fred was after you met her, and you mm. didn't say anything. So that was was that. Uh, did that did it, did it happen that way? Were you just didn't say yeah. anything? Yeah. Anyway? Yeah, I don't. You know. Um, yeah, it was really tough. Just, um, yeah, not what I should say is, uh, I, I didn't really know what had happened when I returned. I, I was still like interpreting it and you're mm. second guessing yourself. And did I hear that right? And did she really say that she mm. would call me? Am I hallucinating? You know, the whole mm. thing feels so surreal and, and so, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hard to process something that's just so intense in a way. So uh, I was really unsure uh, about how to take um, what, what, what had just happened to me. So, so that's, that's what my face is really, <laughs> mm -hmm. the way it is when I'm returning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did that worry you, Fred, when he didn't say anything? Or could you feel that? <sighs> Yeah, I think I was really like a, a wreck at the moment because uh, you kind of also like second guessing all this whole creative kind of uh, journey that you're on, which in that moment just seems so like worthless because I'm just saying, that, okay, I'm just saying to myself, okay, if this kind of goes south, we're just gonna pull the plug. I don't, I don't want to make this film anymore, and uh, I'm just thinking about like what to do and. Um, when he came towards me, I was like, 
oh man, it kind of looks like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> and uh, I just want to, I, I didn't want to say anything, you know, I just wanted to say, okay, if he's going to say anything he wants to say, he's going to say it. And we just like stood there for a little second. And um, I'm really glad that that moment is in the film as well, because um, when it happened, I, 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 I was, to be honest, I was just thinking about, okay, how is this going to, you know, back to that being in between roles, you know, you're there as a friend, but you also have this like filmmaker that's like, you know, nodding your shoulders, like, oh yeah, how is this going to work? And is this the third, am I in the third act now? <laughs> it's like, which is, is at times almost like a, 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 a disgusting situation to be in because you feel a bit, um, you feel a bit cynical, I think. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really like battling in between these roles. But uh, yeah, I, th I thought that moment was, was, uh, was pretty terrifying. <laughs> understandable understandable. Mm. Uh, when you think back at at the whole production uh, both at home and in Japan uh, are there any special moments other than of course actually meeting your mom Marius that uh, come to mind special or, or surprising moments Oof. Mm. So many to choose oh, from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I have do like one moment. Uh, it's like when we first arrived to Japan, I've never been there before. And uh, we had our little tiny crew with us. And um, it's just uh, this feeling of like, oh my God, we actually made it this far. Mm. And uh, we stayed um, uh, a while in Tokyo before moving on. So we had this feeling that, you know, the clock was ticking down until, you know, it's, mm. it's going to happen. Uh, so we had this feeling, like this feeling of, you know, uh, trying to to uh, to shoot other stuff, and then we we came up with this idea of this uh, the salary man while while we were there, we were lucky enough to have this uh, like awesome uh, translator uh, with us that helped us just to get locations and just from a from a, like a pure a creative point of view, just like getting I getting an I, idea on Monday and then filming it on Tuesday and then. It was just uh, like pure like creative bliss. All the while, this this sort of almost like a doomsday clock was like ticking. So I think that was just, um, just some some days that uh, I think was uh, really impactful for me. But I mean, there's so much you know, yeah. so much stuff that I think is, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it seems like this the process of making this was a fulfilling um, process. Do you think you'll wade further into documentary? Uh, I think I said this in, a, in an, another q and like the only documentary that I, I want to do is like if we do a sequel, <laughs> that, that's like the only thing that I would do. But uh, you know, I, I've never had any, uh, I didn't really want, I, I any interest of doing documentary prior to this, but this was such a special thing that, you know, like the the format thing didn't really matter anymore, um, but no, I I think I'm uh, I'm I'm comfortable to returning to my to my uh, my cave of uh, horrible short films. But obviously, Marius, for you it was uh, a total success, and yeah, I mean, unbelievable, really. To, to find her after all these years. No, it was pretty unbelievable. And, and I didn't expect to be that lucky at all, actually. You know, I, Fred is talking about his fear of um, it all going south at the end. But, uh, you know, initially I, I was thinking I, I was part of the reason to, to, um, to do this was uh, as a film. Uh, and not just as something to do for my own life, my own private, you know, just for myself, is that I thought I had this idea that uh, um, if it all turned out to be like an enormous failure, you know, mm -hmm. if, if it all turned out to be, you know, end up with some rejection at the end, then then by making it out as a film, I could sort of like make it into this, I don't know, sort of like an existential project. Where my mm. failure could become heroic in some sense. You know, that's the mm. that's the uh, creative person, you know, mixing his personal life with his work, speaking mm. perhaps. But that's that's the idea. That was my idea. 
So it was the idea that I could fail and it could still be a creative success. Especially that was, yeah, that was tremendously comforting. Yeah. So I, I was, I was carrying that with me all throughout the film. I was very, um, you know, I, I thought it looked like I was heading towards rejection because I didn't get an answer to my letters. And mm. it wasn't until I was actually, you know, standing right in front of her that I had any sort of um, contact with her. You know, some feedback, some real sense of where this was going. So up until then, I was just waiting for the big rejection. And yeah. Was, yeah. Well, and and taking the uh, tact you took with making the film, it would have been really easy to turn you into a, a a hero in the end, even if you had not come away with what you wanted. Yeah. Well, you know, I I think I could also be a hero if even if I was, you know. Um, no, uh, you know, I, I use the word hero. Perhaps that's the wrong word. Maybe. But you know, just <laughs> to have like a, be a creative success, I didn't have to turn mm -hmm. out to be like this glorified character or anything. But uh, you know, this guy trying to find his mother and and her rejecting him at the end. I was, you know, that's the film I could also end up making. I I was prepared for that, yeah. is what I should say. I was prepared for that mm -hmm. outcome and. Um. Uh, I'm getting a little bit lost here, <laughs> but I was prepared for that. This is just my point, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really, essentially, you did come out. And again, the, the word hero is not, not right, but in the end, it was just such, you gave the audience such an uplifting feeling and by, by bearing your soul, souls, both of you, and uh, allowing us to meet your mom too, was, yeah. it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you. It's nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a really great thing to hear people receive your film mm. that way. It really mm. is. So thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you both. Fred and Marius for being here with us today and thanks for sharing your thoughts and your shared experience in creating mm -hmm. this really unique film and uh, I kind of hope you do another documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh, anything can happen I'm not uh, I'm not against it but uh, yeah. And I'll just say thank you to all you out there in cyberspace for joining us and to all our sponsors and donors I'm so very grateful to all of you for helping us keep Docklands alive and kicking through this very challenging year. And please do take in all of the films and events on offer until May 16th. We owe so much to documentary filmmakers. So get out there and see their films. Thank you.